which is you talked about recruiting and you know recruiting from different parts of the country and camps and that not everybody is a fit at Stanford. I would agree with you just based on academics, but I want to hear you talk about what is different and what is unique about Stanford. Well, first of all, I have to address the, the quote that's been thrown around. Uh, it's something I said last year that for some reason got drummed up again. Uh, it was in the middle of a conversation where we're talking about satellite camps and uh, budgets. And for me, to spend the money to send my coaches around and go to all these satellite camps, knowing that we go to an entire camp, there may be one person that's eligible for Stanford. For me, I would rather say, let's spend that time and energy getting that one person to come visit us as opposed to us going around visit each one guy. Um, so that, that was a big thing there. The thing with us is we're looking for great scholar athletes. Uh, we want them to be great on the football field. We need them to be great in the classroom. We need great young men. Um, and it's a narrow path for us. And everyone can say the same thing, but for us, we need these guys to take AP courses. We need these guys to take the SATs and ACTs multiple times. I just want to get a baseline score. We need them to get the best score that they can. And on top of that, they have to fill out an application. So we're the only Division One football team that needs you to fill out an application and get admitted before we even send you a letter of intent. There's a lot of hoops that a lot of guys have to go through. So this is not just, oh yeah, Stanford has high academic standards. Well, Stanford has a very, very narrow path for these young men to follow. So we can't be grouped with anybody else that has quote unquote high academic standards because no one else does what we do. I don't care what they say, they just don't. Which is fine. I, I don't bash them for it, but this is our this is our path. So that that our recruitment process is completely different than everyone else's. Coach, how have you been able to thrive in that? Because I feel like it maybe Maybe thrive is the wrong word, but you done really well at Stanford. You've had you've won a lot of games. You put a lot of kids in the league. You created a lot of good young men out of that program in your time there. How have you been able to do all of that with that you know that narrow path that you talked about? I'll, do, I'll say this: um, Coach Harbaugh gets a lot of credit for starting the run that we're on, which he deserves. Um, at the same time, Bob Bullsby deserves uh, I think a lot more credit too, certainly because. It was going to take a budgetary decision during a time when not many people were spending more money or spending less money. So this is during the economic downturn in the, in the late yeah. 2010s where you know our budget took a hit, everybody else's budget took a hit, and Bob Bowlesby said, no, we're putting more, more money in the football, not less money. So Bob made the commitment, um, Jim, Jim pushed us through there, and then Bernard Mueller's come in as the athletic director and really kind of done the same thing and prioritized football so that we can recruit nationally, so that we can go to every high school that there is maybe a Stanford player anywhere in America and even a couple times on foreign soil. Um, we've got a couple of guys from different countries as well, but it takes us to be able to cast a wide net to find the guys because the bottom line we found out when we came here in 2007 is they're out there. It's up to us to go find them and go convince them that Stanford's the place for them. Well, David Shaw is our guest on the Monty Show brought to you by Harmon Solar and I look at your schedule and I look at the team that you have put together, is it possible with the success you had last year, and I know we just talked to Harrison Phillips who said you didn't have a whole lot of success last year, is it possible that you guys are going to be a closer, better football team this year than you were last year? Um, that's the hope, of course, but I do believe that we can be. It's tough to me to say that we are right now. I don't know that we are, really. Um, losing two phenomenal football players, so Christian McCaffrey and Solomon Thomas, both top ten picks in the NFL, both two of the better players in the nation. Um, we were young and it's inexperienced around them too, certainly. A lot of those young guys have grown up now. They're a year older, so we have more experience. And we may be a little bit more, more diverse on the offensive side, and we may be a little bit more athletic with some experience on the defensive side. So we're missing two great players, but as an entire team, we may be better than we were last year. And your defensive front has the potential, on paper, got to play football, but on paper, your linebackers and the combination of your linebackers with your D-line, it seems like those two together could really be formidable. Are you happy with what you have there and what you're seeing? I'm excited. The way we finished spring ball you know, this past year, I'm really excited about our linebacking core, both outside and inside. And we've got speed and athleticism and experience and toughness um, and depth. Um, so I'm excited about that group. Harrison Phillips, um, 
he's as healthy as he's ever been, he's as strong as he's ever been, he's explosive and athletic, and he's, he's ready to really wreck some shop this year. We've got a couple of young guys on the defense line as well that we need to continue to, to progress. Um, but as a unit, our front seven, we're really good about where they are, and we're going to put a lot of pressure on them. You know, we need them to play at a high level. Do you need Bryce Love to play at a high level? And, and I think there's too much talk in college about, well, this guy graduated. Obviously, Christian was a really good football player for you guys, and he was a big part of your team. But I think your job every year is to make sure that there's guys there graduate. You're supposed to graduate them. And I think Bryce Love, A, he's an impressive guy. I love talking to him. But he has the potential. You saw it in a game like Notre Dame last year where he really performed. He has the potential to be a really good running back. Does he get enough credit for the things that he does for you? You know, uh, we're going to lean on him a lot as well. Uh, we would love to be a little bit more diverse, and Christian carried a heavy load last year. It was one that we felt that we had to do. We, we needed that. We needed to develop a receiving core, the quarterback position, the offensive line. We feel like a lot of that development has happened because that's part of our job, is to develop a young man like Bryce for his opportunity this year to really explode, and then on top of that, to develop the guys around him. So I believe we've got a better, more experienced cast around uh, Bryce, but at the same time, this is a guy that's not the biggest guy in the world, but he can run the ball between the tackles. He breaks tackles. He's physical. Uh, he can catch the ball in the backfield. Uh, but he is lightning quick and explosive. I think he's going to have a really, really good game. Will you be diverse enough on offense, do you think? Have you grown enough um, running back, quarterback, offensive line? Do you feel like you've grown enough offensively to, 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 for the offense to do the job you need them to? I sure hope so, and that, that's been the plan all along, starting at right at the end of the season last year, the development that we needed to make, and I think all of our quarterbacks, Grant Keller didn't get a chance to participate in spring, but all of our quarterbacks got better. Um, I think we did some interesting things and different things to kind of show what they can do better in, in the spring, um, and really get, develop our receiving core and our tight ends. I think that we'll have a better group of guys, and it's pretty much the same group, but each of them has gotten better since last year. Um, and on top of Bryce, who, you know, two times a starting running back and came back in the bowl game as well and had over 100 yards. So he started two games and over 100 yards in both of those games. Um, so I think we have a good complementary group uh, to hopefully attack this conference. And before I let you go, I do want to ask you about recruiting. Because you don't have the biggest class. But it, 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 I don't know that you needed a huge class this year with the quality that you have returning for you. Does Do those class sizes vary? And, and really, what is it? What is it? Do you, do you go out looking for the best football player or players based on need? What's your philosophy on that? Some combination. Some combination. And, and so my, most of my background is NFL. There's an NFL background. It's right in my front of the viewers. And drafting for need is the worst thing that you can do. You take the best players that you can find. And so some, there are sometimes when we have a need, if we can't fill it with the highest caliber player, then we won't take a, a lesser caliber player. I think that's where you get in really some difficult situations. Um, so for us, we want we want great football players. And we want great students as well. And we can't sacrifice either one of those. We just won't. So there are times where we may have 18 scholarships available and take 15 guys or 16 guys because we can only find 16 to fill the roles that we need them to fill um, and are as good as we want them to be. So we never hold to maintaining a class size. And there have been multiple years where we did not take the full complement of a class. And we're fine with that. We may give a scholarship to a walk-on that's going to run down on kickoff or do something like that and take the financial burden off of his family for a year and then take that scholarship back after a year and then go try to find someone else as well. So um, I think the roster management that we've done in the last few years has been really Wow, spectacular. Uh, Coach, good to meet you. Good to talk to you. Thanks so much for your time. Thank you. Appreciate it.